introduced today at Eurobike 2019, an update from TAC to their flagship direct drive smart trainer, the Neo 2T. This is the second update we've seen to the original Neo unit in the last 12 months, with the Neo 2 being announced in October, November last year. Cutting straight to the details on this one, here are the updates that come today with the Neo 2T. First up, native through axle support, so no longer do we need a quick release adapter. You can use your through axle from your bike to mount on the Neo 2T. There's a more powerful resistance unit which addresses the virtual tire slip, so more uh, power, more resistance at lower flywheel speeds. Even quieter operation with the internal neodymium magnets, that's where the word neo comes from, being aligned a little differently to quieten things down. And finally, the pedaling analysis on the Neo 2T supports open standards, so it's compatible with your head units and other software. One of the key updates mentioned there with the 2T is the ability of the unit to apply more resistance at a lower flywheel speed so you don't get that virtual tire slip. That was one of the things on the Neo 1 and 2 that really got to me. This appears to be virtually eliminated. In early July, I had the opportunity to visit the TAX HQ to have a look at the Neo 2T being built. Here is a 2T on the test rig, being calibrated or certified for calibration in the factory. Now the one difference with the 2T and the 2 is the 2T has two little black strips on the armband there. It still has blue pants. Speaking of blue pants, here is one of my favorite robots bolting the blue pants onto the 2T, there at the factory. And now over to my favorite robot on the shop floor, Captain Glue. Now Captain Glue will take the neodymium magnets from the stack, where they're all pretty hard pressed together, extract those, put a little bit of glue on each one, and then take them over to the flywheel and insert them in exactly the right spot. And you can see them there a little offset in the flywheel. I can watch this machine all day, it's fascinating stuff. And here's a close up of the flywheels with the magnets offset for the Neo 2T. Not straight up and down anymore, a little bit offset. Onto the unit specifications, and on paper, not a lot different between the Neo 1 and the Neo 2. They were ahead of their time. So we have a direct drive, interactive smart trainer, erg mode, sim mode, and more. We have isotonic, isokinetic modes with the Neos. They can do some pretty funky things. By compatibility, we have quick release 130, 135, and now 142 and 148 native through axle support. That's a good thing. Shimano compatible free hub does not come with a cassette. Wireless protocols, AMP Plus, AMP Plus FEC, Bluetooth Smart, Bluetooth FTMS, the data transmission speed, cadence power, and trainer control which means if you're on Apple TV, you get the trifecta. Power accuracy claims less than 1%. I guess that's 1% margin of error, so it should be pretty accurate when put up against other known good power sources. No calibration required, excellent. Grade simulation up to 25%. Max wattage, 2200 watts. We also have downhill drive on the Neo 1, 2, and 2T, which means if you're on a virtual downhill, that flywheel will tick over for you. It doesn't really help you move forward on Zwift or something like that. You need to generate power for that, but it just adds a bit more realism if you want to coast down a hill. Road surface simulation, so you get cobbles, gravel, ice, plank bridges, whatever they want to do with the programming of that. It's pretty nifty. You can feel that through the pedals. Flywheel weight in size, it's claimed mass inertia of 125 kilos, but the Neo 122T has a virtual flywheel, so it's dependent on software. It can be a pretty big flywheel if they choose to simulate that. Noise level, really quiet, yes, really, because of those magnet realignments. Unit weight, that's the entire box as it comes, is 24.8 kilos, and yes, my FedEx guy knows how heavy this unit is. Works with or without power. Without power, you'll get no downhill drive, but you can pack this one up and take it to a race and use it as a full smart trainer with full capabilities without power being plugged in, and a front wheel riser block is supplied. Onto the global pricing here, it appears the price of the Neo 2T stays the same as the Neo 2. So US dollars, $13.99 Australia, which I'll pick out where I am, $18.99, and in the UK, you're looking at $11.99 pounds. Okay, there are all the details. Let's get this unboxed and have a closer look at that through axle support. Superb packaging here, maximizing all the space in a small box. Okay, everything you need to know about what comes in the box. Obviously the Neo 2T itself, front riser block, we have some manuals, power cables, the kits to convert it to through axle if needed, 
and the power brick. There's the armbands that indicate that it's a Neo 2T. And the unit comes with quick release as standard. So here's me converting it over to 142 by 12 through axle. Drive side first before we put the cassette on. 11 speed Altegra for what I use, just fine. And non-drive side. Sorted. Okay, bike on with the through axle that we use on our bike. So that's what I mean by native through axle. No additional adapter required. Okay, powering up and call this the noise check. This is a shotgun mic directed straight at the trainer. The noisiest part of all that is me changing through my gears and the DI2. So here's the sound check. You can hear the chain and the drivetrain. The unit itself is virtually silent. That's, as I said, it's shotgun mic directed straight at the trainer, and this does pass the sleeping baby test. One thing to do with the Neo units is to open up the Tax Utility app and first of all, check for new firmware. So there was a firmware update from 26 to 27 with this. I'm now on 28. I suspect there's gonna be a few more revisions very soon, but here's the process with that. So definitely make sure you have the Tax Utility and do that update. Just takes a few minutes to get that done. And now once that's done, make sure you go to the settings of your Neo 2 which you can see just here, and update the default body weight. Now this is required for Bluetooth because Bluetooth doesn't have the ability to set your body weight to deal with the inertia calculation. So if you set it within here, Bluetooth will be happy. Ant Plus has it covered in your software. With many, many hours on the 2T clocked up, it's time to talk about the ride feel, the user experience, the on bike, on pedal, what's it like to ride? Well, first of all, it's definitely a Neo. It has Neo characteristics, I guess you'd call it. It has a little wiggle side to side, which is welcome, a little bit of flex. So it's not like riding a brick fence with a saddle on it, that's a good thing. It's virtually silent. By virtually silent, I mean you'll hear your drivetrain and you'll know when it's time to oil your chain. Um, and that free wheel does make a noise. It's funny how they make silent trainers, but as soon as you stop pedaling, it starts ratcheting up. We'll have to do a video on how to quieten that all down. Uh, high powered sprints appear to be sorted. I could not trip this unit up. There's an easy way to trip up a Neo 1 and Neo 2. You go up a gradient, lower gear, punch the pedals and you'll slip out pretty easily. This thing held on. So good stuff there appears to be virtually solved with that one. Erg mode on the 2T will come at you like a freight train. Well, probably more like a mini bus after some feedback we provided tax. It was just punching way, way too hard into those resistance changes and you really had to slog things over before it came down and stabilized. That's been updated with the firmware update just the other day and it's more, yeah, a little tamer on the pedals. Same goes for the steady state erg. It was just a little harsh on the pedals because it was just overcompensating with its extra power, I guess, or undercompensating when it dropped off. It's a little bit jagged now that it's been smoothed out. So the user experience in steady state erg was pretty good. So overall, in regards to the on bike, on pedal, what's it like experience, this is definitely a step up from the Neo 1 and the Neo 2. In particular, those sprints really pack a punch and those erg resistance changes, you're gonna know about it pretty quick, but hey, that's what training is all about. Now here's where things go a little off piece, so to speak. Now I've spent a lot of time in the Neo 2T in recent weeks. Typically a trainer will arrive, I'll do my research, I'll schedule some time, I'll unbox it, get it set up, do a llama lab test, maybe a few rides, have a look at the data, job done, make a video, happy days. Uh, wasn't quite the case with this unit. Look, my trusty Neo 1 still takes pride of place in the llama lab for power meter testing and I really wanted to put the Neo 2T to the test to see if it could replace the Neo 1. Well, the inverse was true. The Neo 2T tested me, the Llama Lab, and I think every power meter I had access to, it's been quite the journey. What I try and do is have the true user experience in the Llama Lab, so if you're watching these videos, you know exactly what to expect when you unbox something, jump on, ride your bike, look at the numbers, and it's happy days. Hopefully you even have a better experience than I because you watch me make the mistakes first, you have a bit of a giggle, away you go, you do it better. So. 
Look, let's move gently into this by first acknowledging that a few things are yet to be implemented, namely cycling dynamics and the pedaling dynamics. It's not there, not there. It's in the spec sheet, but it's not implemented at this point in time. It may be a firmware update away, but it's currently not there. So we know this is a work in progress. Next, the original Neo, it's a pretty trusted source of truth for power. And there's a few edge cases though, where you can fool it, but there's a reason why I use it for the Llama lab test, steady state stuff. It's reliable, dependable. You go to it any time of the day, in almost any temperature with any other power meter. And if the power meter is good, the Neo will agree, it's happy days. And the Neo 2T has that potential, but that potential is still yet to be realized. After 10 Llama lab tests, it's been a lot of training rides the last few weeks, I'm still seeking that potential in the 2T. That search has involved being sent a new firmware just this week, so that potential, again, is still being realized, and it's still a work in progress. Look, I won't spend an hour going through the 10 Llama lab test data sets. They're all over with tax for review. But what I'm gonna do now is go through the Neo 2T versus the Vector 3 pedals. Vector 3 is uh, owned by Garmin, Garmin owned tax. That's what they've been using internally. So I thought to give it the best chance of working and replicating their tests internally, I'll have a look at the Vector 3 data. So as always, my favorite website on the internet, the DC Rainmaker Analysis Tool, where we can compare multiple power meters and their fit files as an overlay and see how things stack up. So Neo 2T versus the Vector 3s. Now the first 10 minutes I will throw away because we're resetting the install angles and getting everything calibrated, a few stomp sprints, it's all good. As I said, this is one data set of 10, but it represents pretty much the experience that I've had so far to date with the current firmware. Okay, diving into the steady state stuff, there's a few dropouts right about there. So we'll stop the drag about there. Okay, 224 versus 228 uh, with a few interesting spikes there from the Vector 3s. Not too bad, four watts off, pedals four watts higher. Look, that's not too bad, not too bad. Uh, the Neo 1 and Neo 2 are within two watts, so four watts, again, I'm nitpicking, but this isn't the next level. This is going the other way. So that was something that was a bit of a concern. Uh, diving a little closer here, we had some dropouts. Now I blame this on the Edge 1030 that I've been using with beta firmware. I shouldn't be testing with beta firmware. But what we can see here um, is the peak power. It gets up to within 40 watts at 1100. Forget the drop out there, that was not, uh, not very handy. I have done a ton of other sprints though and it's been okay. I just wanted to use this data set, so just excuse the sprint dropout for there. That's looking okay. Now, into the just riding along, just riding along. And we have a separation of 10 watts there. Now this is 125 on the Neo 2T, 135 on the Vector 3s. So that's not within 1%, um, that's, a little bit too far out for my liking, just riding along. Diving in here to the overs and unders, and look close, but you can see that there is an offset there by, it's about 10 watts the whole way across. So typically a power meter, if it's off, um, it'll be off at a higher range and not the lower range. This is just consistently off both at the 350, 150, 350, 150, 350, 450, sorry. 150, 450, so it's just a little bit off. Comparing this to the Neo 2, Similar, but you can see here, this is the Neo 2 with the Vector 3s, 275, 273, they're within two watts for that test. Here, 266, 273, it's just a little bit farther out than I would like. Um, you can also see the purple spikes there, the little devil horns, that's the Neo kicking in really hard. And that's better than what it was last week, so it's still a work in progress there. Uh, and then more just riding along, I suspect this is gonna be about 10 watts off just here at easy, 89, 99, there you go, 10 watts difference. And then more riding on Zwift in sim mode, away from ERG, just in case ERG was a problem. 256, 263, again, not within 1% of each other there. And maybe like, let's say within 2% or 3%, still not quite Neo 1 or Neo 2 accuracy that I'm seeing in this particular test. Um, and then there's also the edge case where you spin the flywheel up above 40 kilometers an hour and the power starts to separate. Um, so we've gone, if you know Zwift, flying past Hanks on the downhill. 275, 292 for this little section here for around a minute. Uh, that's a big, big difference there, but that's a known edge case with the Neo 1, 2, and obviously the 2T now, just can't hold accurate power. So gold standard, not quite there yet. I've noted a number of left-right balance issues with the calculation from the 2T as well. Now all this data is over to tax for review, but the four power meters, the four independent left-right power meters that I've used, don't line up with what the Neo 2T is reporting. It takes the total power, splits it at a certain point. I don't think that point is correct. Well, it's definitely not correct for my pedaling. 
What that does to cycling dynamics, well, it makes that data not very useful. If the left right isn't correct with cycling dynamics, then it's no use using cycling dynamics at all. Stay tuned for an update on that, I hope. So that's one data set, and I wish that's all there was, but look, there's a number of rabbit holes there, and as I said, it, it would take me an hour or more to go through them all. It's, it's been a lot of fun, um, but what happens is when the trainer is out just a little bit, that's when I have to question everything that I do. If the trainer is out a lot, for example, it's 50 watts out at 250 watts, that's easy. You just pack it straight back up and send it back, and that has occurred recently. This one is just out a little bit, so I was searching and searching and searching, but at the end of the day, unboxing this and getting on the pedals wasn't what I expected. It wasn't up to the standard of the Neo 1 and the Neo 2 at this point in time with the current firmware. Look, and this is why I've entitled this video the initial review, because we're not quite done yet. So it's clear the Neo 2T does need some refinements and hopefully we'll see those ones rolled out very, very soon because I'm looking at retiring that Neo 1. That workhorse is now tired, but after my experience with the 2T, I'm now tired as well. Okay, in summary and wrapping this one up for today, Tax have addressed a few of the issues we've raised with the Neo 1 and the 2. That is the through axle support, it's now native through axle, and the on-bike ride experience, especially in regard to that virtual tire slip, has been virtually eliminated. That is excellent. There's just a bit of a question around the power accuracy and getting that in line with the previous models. Okay, leaving it there for today. Thanks for watching another episode of GP Llama causes trainer companies headaches. It's been quite the journey and we're not there yet. Now, where's that Neo bike?